Shalom. All right. I want to begin this lesson by giving all praises, all glory and honor to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechakodash. Also, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that do rule and teach well. And as always, peace, love, many blessings to the elect. All right, this is the brother Atazawam coming back through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Nawashah with another lesson, Lord willing, I hope and pray that it's edifying. All right, today's lesson is going to be entitled, The Land of Israel Belongs to So-Called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans. And in this lesson, I'm going to be exploring some maps, um, you know, some um, land masses, ge geographical uh, parts of the world, and link it with, uh, with the breakdown of the Bible. Because when we read certain things in the scriptures uh, uh, pertaining to land masses or, you know, mountain regions and areas, uh, we can't put a, uh, a picture with it. OK, so we imagine where this mountain might be or we imagine where this land mass might be or this river or this lake might be. But that's the power of technology, you know, so I'm going to use this phone uh, uh, to show you that that land actually indeed belongs to so-called blacks, black people, Hispanic people, and Native American people whose lineage goes back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, okay? Now, what I have here, I'm, I'm just on regular maps, okay? Um, and I got the land of Israel, all right? This is the modern-day map of Israel, all right? And to the left of the land of Israel, you have the Mediterranean Sea. And if you go south, uh, west... OK, from the land of Israel, you will be in Egypt. OK, you'll be in Egypt, which is a part of Africa, a.k.a. the land of Ham. All right. If you go north, you'll be in Syria, which was also where uh, Israel dwelt. OK, the land of Syria, uh, which that's where you had a lot of northern kingdom that dwelt in the land of Syria, Ephraimites. If you go further north, you have Turkey, which Turkey is known as the land of uh, Japheth. OK, which that's also where uh the ark noah's ark landed in turkey and his three sons spread their seed throughout the earth from the point of turkey okay now the israelites all right or those that come from shem primarily dwelt in this this area right here the fertile crescent all right you had edom which uh, dwelt south of israel uh you had moab um uh you had the land of uh uh, of <clears throat> excuse me um who would this be ishmael then you had the land of uh elam okay all in this primary region okay right all right all over here iran these are all where the children of shem okay migrated okay now israel was actually was actually originally the land of ham okay primarily canaan all right, but, you know, upon conquest, you know, that land of Canaan was uh, taken by the children of Israel, and that was our borders, okay? Now, when you read the Bible, okay, we would disperse from this land, starting with the northern kingdom, okay? Now, let's get, let's get into the scriptures, all right? This is 2nd Ezra chapter 13 and verse 40. All right, it says, uh, those are the ten tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their own land in the time of Hosea the king, because at the time where Israel was led away captive by the Assyrians, Hosea was the king of Israel uh, uh, at that particular time. OK, and it says um, whom shall Manasseh, which if I'm not mistaken, I believe that this was shall Manasseh the third, um, uh, the king of Assyria led away cap captive and he carried them over the waters. So they came into another land. Now, when it says that he carried them over the waters is talking about he carried them into a region uh that's known today as mesopotamia okay so the assyrian captivity where the the, the the northern kingdom uh was carried away to which the northern kingdom being more specific is consists of you hispanics and native americans okay when you read the bible about the northern kingdom all right or the, the kingdom of israel it's talking about you hispanics and native americans to this day now, your, your ancestors was led into captivity around 740 B.C., if I'm not mistaken, somewhere up in there, around, set, you know, seven, mid-7, seven, you know, uh, early to mid-700 B.C. Um, you were led away captive under the king, Mount Shalmaneser, king of Assyria, and you went into a region called Mesopotamia, 
Okay. Now, Mesopotamia, the word Mesopotamia actually means between two rivers. Okay. Uh, um, Meso means uh, in between or the middle. Okay. Like you have Median or, or uh, um, Mediterranean. You know that the word M-E goes back to the word middle. Okay. Mild or, you know, things like that. So Meso means middle and Potamia means rushing waters. Okay. Because the Greek word for um, for river is uh, pot potamos, okay? If I'm pronouncing it correctly, the Greek word for river is potamos, okay? So you were led away uh, into Mesopotamia, okay? Now let's look at Mesopotamia. Let's go to the maps, all right? Now Mesopotamia today would be modern-day Iraq. Okay, now you probably can't see it too good, but right here you got the Euphrates River. Okay, let me see if I can drop a pen on it. Uh, I'm trying to see if, it, if it'll actually say Euphrates. But nonetheless, it might not say it. But uh, this is the Euphrates River that you see right here. Oh, there you go, Euphrates. See it? Okay, I'm trying to get it to pull real quick. Bear with me, my brothers. But, I mean, you see it. You get the point. That's the Euphrates, right? Now, if you go over here, all right, let's go up a little bit because that's a, uh, now if you go right here, you have the Tigris. Ah, oh, come on, maps. Satan on it. All right, you see it, Tigris, all right? So let's, let's zoom back out, all right? So they, they were led away into this region. Okay, which would be in Iraq, modern day Iraq. You got the Euphrates right there. You got the Tigris River right there. That is where the Northern Kingdom dwelt. Okay, so let's read that again. Second Ezra 13 and 40. Those are the 10 tribes which are carried away prisoner out of their own land, meaning Israel, in the time of Hosea the king, whom shall Manasseh the king of Assyria led away captive. And he carried them over the waters, meaning they came, they, they were actually led over the Euphrates River. Okay? And so they came into another land, Mesopotamia, a.k.a. that's where Assyria was at. Verse 41. But they took this counsel among themselves that they would leave the multitude of the heathen and go forth into a further country where never mankind dwelt, that they might keep their laws, like it, that they might keep their statutes in their land, which they never kept in their own land. And they enter into the Euphrates by the narrow passage of the river. All right, let's go back to the map. All right, now we follow the Euphrates. I'm going to try to follow the Euphrates River to the best of my ability based upon what I can see. All right, I think that, yeah, we see the river. All right, river, we following it. We following it. Yep, we're still with the Euphrates. Okay, going down, going down. All right. Now we're getting a little... All right, you still got it. Yep, the spirit leading us through the Euphrates right now. All right, so the northern kingdom came a nice little way. All right, they came a nice little way, still going through the Euphrates, and boom, they dump, they emptying out. Now notice it say the narrow passages of the river. See when you get down here, these the, the Euphrates River gets a lot narrow. Okay, it gets a lot narrow. So that's this is the way that hold on. Let me make sure this is, is this even? No, this one, this will still be considered the Euphrates. Okay, so it gets a little narrow and then boom, it leads out into a larger body of water, which is known as the Persian Gulf. Boom, see? So they came down into the Persian Gulf. All right, let's keep going. It says, <clears throat> and they entered into the Euphrates by the narrow passages of the river. For the Most High had showed them signs, for the Most High had then showed signs for them, and hell stood the flood till they were passed over. For through that country there was a great way to go, namely a year and a half, and the same region is called Arsuri. So, we understand that that's how so-called Hispanics and Native Americans journeyed over here to the Americas. They came down from Mesopotamia, remember they were led away captive. From Israel into Mesopotamia, and then they, they took counsel among themselves, jumped in the Euphrates by, by boat, came down into the Persian Gulf, and, you know, they came around that horn right there, 
okay, uh, that Dubai, the Strait of Hormuz, and they emptied out into the Gulf of Oman, which then led them into the Arabian Sea or the Indian Ocean, okay? And then they came down under Africa and over into the Americas. So a lot of the indigenous people literally actually landed in, uh, came in through South America, Central America, okay? Because they came, they, they, they came down under here and migrated up, all right? So now we have in ge geographical, uh, 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 get some geographical understanding based on what the scriptures say, all right? Now this, this account is actually documented in the Bible in the book of 2 Kings. Let's get it. All right, this is 2 Kings chapter 17, and um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just read from the top. It says, In the twelfth year of Ahaz, king of Judah, began Hosea, the son of Eli, to reign in Samaria over Israel nine years. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, but not as the king of Israel or the kings of Israel that were before him. Again came up Shalmaneser, which we just read in 2 Ezra, the 13th chapter. That was written by the prophet Ezra, okay, king of Assyria, and Hosea became his servant, okay, and gave him presents. And the king of Assyria found conspiracy in Hosea, for he had sent messengers to So, king of Egypt, and brought no presents to the king of Assyria, and he had done as he had done year by year. Therefore, the king of Assyria shut him up and bound him in prison. Then the king of Assyria came through all the land and went up to Samaria and besieged it three years. In the ninth year of King Hosea, the king of Assyria took Samaria and carried Israel into Assyria and placed them in Hala and in harbor by the river of Gozan and in the cities of the Medes. OK, so let's go and look up Assyria. OK, let's see here. Ancient Assyria. Let's see what we can do. Boom. All right. Now, ancient Assyria. Look what it says. Mesopotamia okay you see that it says Mesopotamia right there that's the that's the Tigris to the left that's the Euphrates to the to the upper upper right I mean I'm sorry the Euphrates is at the bottom the Tigris is at the left and it empties out into what the Gulf of Persia all right so the Bible is is accurate the Bible is accurate in itself okay and if I'm not mistaken Israel began to be besieged originally by King uh, Saigon or Sargon, and then that, but but King Salmanasser actually overthrew Israel. But I, I'll correct it if uh, if there's not so. Okay, uh, it says in the ninth year of Hosea, the king of Assyria took Samaria and carried Israel away into Assyria and placed them in Hala and in the harbor by the river of Gozan. And in the cities of the Medes. For so it was that the children of Israel had sinned against the Lord their power, which had brought them up out of the land of Egypt from under the hand of Pharaoh, king, king of Egypt, and feared other gods, and walked in the statues of the heathens whom the Lord cast out from before the children of Israel and the kings of Israel which they had made. That's why it tells us back in 2 Ezra 13, it said, Verse 41, but they took this counsel among themselves that they would leave the multitude of the heathen and go forth into a further country where never mankind dwelt, that they might keep their statues, which they never kept in their own land. So it just told us that in 2 Kings 17, that the children of Israel was joined unto idols and following after the, the, the customs and the other ways of the people. OK, so the Bible is linking it up and it's actually giving you a place where you can point where where, where Jake migrated. OK, so let's get some more scriptures. All right, let's go to. Uh, let me see. Uh, Isaiah 63. <clears throat> let's go down to 18. 
Uh, this is Isaiah 63 and 18. The people of thy holiness have possessed it a little while going into the Holy Land. Okay, because our people, we, we, we dwelt in Israel in peace for approximately 40 years under the, 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 the throne of David. Okay, and we, are, we also know under the throne of uh, King Solomon. That's where we had the 40 years of peace. It was wars going on during King David. It was splits. It was all kind of stuff going on. Okay. But the peace came under King Solomon. Okay. And it says, um, <clears throat> the people of thy holiness have possessed it a little while. Our adversaries have trodden down thy sanctuary. And our sanctuary, uh, of course, our sanctuary is Yahweh Bashem Shah. But the Lord gave us an actual landmass. To be able to worship and, and practice our, our our laws and commandments, um, and that land was taken away from us. That temple was taken away. That 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 sanctuary was brought down by the heathens. Okay, so this never happened to the the present ruling uh, uh, class that called themselves who we really are. Okay, which we call them the 1948ers. That never happened to them. Okay. Who came into to, to Israel while they was living there and destroyed their temple? Okay? Nobody. All right? So this is how you know that, that what? That this happened to us, our people. All right? Now, through the process of slavery and, and being indoctrinated and being separated from our laws and customs and, 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 our, and our power, ultimately our power, um, a lot of people are unbeknownst to us being the original inhabitants of that particular landmass. Okay, that's a spirit, man. I just seen two lightning strikes, uh, you know, kind of look like rivers. You know, I'm sitting outside and the two lightning strikes kind of, you know, resemble the two rivers, uh, Tigris and Euphrates. So that's a spirit, you know. Um, but yeah, so the Lord uh, actually had it set up by design to take us out of those lands. Okay, but guess what? The Lord is going to actually bring us back into that land. All right. Verse 19, we are thine. Thou bearest rule over them. They are not called by thy name. See, these heathen nations aren't called by the name of Yahweh Bashim Awashai. But we are. Okay? Our nationality, our culture, our heritage, our, our, who we are, that's etched in our DNA, is the sons of the of the uh, is the princes of the power. Okay? That's who we are. So that land, man, we have a spiritual connection with that land. And, and that connection will be reignited through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim al Shai, Lord willing, very soon. Okay? Now let's get it, let's get some more scriptures. <clears throat> Alright, let's go to Luke. All right, it says uh, Luke 21, 24, and they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. OK, now this is going into 70 A.D., of course, when the southern kingdom, which is comprised of you so-called blacks, Haitians and Jamaicans, West Indian tribes of pigmentation. OK. Uh, uh, you you still possess the land of Israel for a longer amount of time than the northern kingdom, all right? The Hispanics and Native Americans, you were still there at the time of Yahweh Shai, okay? But that but eventually you were cast out of that land during 70 A.D., okay? And you fled into the interiors of Africa, all right? And through there you built kingdoms, <laughs> and um in Africa you had kingdoms in Europe, okay? Roughly around the same time, okay, and 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 through that that those kingdoms that you had in those other lands, we fell, okay, as a people, we fell, but now through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Shai, the Lord is going to have a remnant to rise to the occasion, out out of all these tribes, uh, and elect, okay, it says um, so it it tells you that Jerusalem will be trodden down of the Gentiles. OK, and the Gentiles, meaning the strangers, the other nations. All right. They came and they land. They, they ransacked our our, uh, um, our land. They destroyed our temples, our sanctuaries. They uh, confiscated all of our uh, precious items and, and, and values. OK, relics, uh, documents, treasures, you know, things that we held near and dear to us. 
they they confiscated those things and they still have them in their presence to this day. Okay, let's keep reading. Um, let's get another scripture. Uh, Zechariah chapter nine. All right, this is the book of Zechariah chapter nine and verse six. And a bastard shall dwell in Ashdod, and I will cut off the pride of the Philistines. Okay, now Ashdod, when you look at the map, is a um, a port. It's a port city. Okay. Um, primarily where, uh, if I'm not mistaken, <laughs> Salakim, if I'm not mistaken, that's where a bunch of, uh, uh Ishmaelites, they dwell on the, on the uh, coast of, uh, Palestine. Okay. Which palace, Palestine is Gaza, Ashdod, you know, those coastal, the uh, Gaza strip. They on that coastal strip of Israel. Matter of fact, let me go, let's go back to the map. It's the spirit. Okay. So. You got Palestine is is on is all these coastal areas of Israel. Now you got Ashdod right there. Now in these areas you have a bunch of Ishmaelites. Okay, that's a bunch of Ishmaelites. All right, um, and it says, um, "And a bastard shall dwell in Ashdod." Now that bastard that's dwelling in Ashdod, of course, is you so-called Amalekites, but also Ishmael, because Ishmael is in those lands trying to fight. You know, for Israel and act as if that land uh, belongs to them. Okay, that's why you had when uh, Israel attack was attacking Palestine last year. They was lighting that bitch up. Okay, they was lighting that place up. All right, so we 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 understand that the the habit the current inhabitants of that landmass is not the rightful rulers. Okay, now let's go to to the book uh, the book of uh. Hold on here. Baruch. Chapter four. All right, we're gonna go to Baruch chapter four, and uh, and verse six. It says, "You were sold to the nations not for your destruction, but because you moved the Most High to wrath, you were delivered unto the enemies." Okay, so the Lord didn't deliver us over to these um these other nations to destroy us, you know, to to utterly annihilate us and to, and exterminate us off the earth. We made the Lord angry through our through our um our conduct, joining ourselves unto idols idol worshiping and forsaking the Lord, breaking the commandments and laws, you, you know, f fulfilling the lust of the flesh. So the Lord got angry with us and led us into captivity, but it wasn't for our destruction. All right. Verse seven, for you provoked him that made you by sacrificing unto devils and not to the most high. And that's what Jake is still doing unto this day on this very day. Now, you know, you got Jake, you know, having pool parties and barbecues and, and congregating all in the name of, of the so-called white man's army. Memorial Day. Having a memorial. And when he, when Jake is having these gatherings, they ain't thinking about no fucking soldiers. They're not thinking about no troops. They're not thinking about, you know, the men that laid their lives down for the freedom of the American citizens. They're just not. They're there freaking out in their bikinis, showing off their Brazilian butt lifts, you know, showing off their they, they new uh, breast augmentations and, and um, you know, their cheek fillers. That's all the Jake. That's all Jake is doing, you know, showing off their new outfits and, and you know drinking, playing spades, arguing, you know, losing their children. That's what Jake is doing. Okay, verse eight. Ye have forgotten the everlasting power that bought you up, and you have grieved Jerusalem that nursed you, the land, the area. Jerusalem was a land known of flowing with milk and honey. All right, when we came into Israel, the land of Canaan, we, we, the Lord had all kind of uh, resources, natural resources for, uh, for us to uh, live abundantly off of. Okay, but what ended up happening? Jake ended up sacrificing unto idols and devils. Okay, verse 9, for when she saw the wrath of the Most High coming upon you, she said, hearken. Okay, O ye that dwell upon, about Zion, the Most High have brought upon me great mourning. For I saw the captivity of my sons and daughters, which the everlasting brought upon them. See that? So the, that, that land of Israel seen us get carried away captive several times. Okay? Several times. Under the, the, the original Babylonians. Okay? The, the, the Kush, which are the Cushites. And then, you know, Jake was led away captive by the Greeks. Led away captive by the Romans. Led away captive by the Assyrians. So on and so forth. Out of that very landmass. Because of the same conduct. All right. And it says, um, with joy did I nourish them, but sent them away with weeping and mourning. Because why? Look at the land. If you look at the land of Israel, it's, it's been trodden down and it's been, you know, polluted, 
and, and it's all kind of idle set up over there. It's been that's why it tells you in Ezekiel thirty eight that uh it's gonna get nuked. But it said the land that shall be brought back from the sword, talking about the Lord is gonna replenish that land because the sword is gonna actually hit Israel, meaning the missiles. It's gonna it's gonna come up come down upon Idumia. Okay, which the chief house of Idumium dwells in the land of Israel right now. So the Lord is going to actually bring a nuclear cleanse into that land, but he's going to bring it back. Okay. Verse 12, let no man rejoice over me, a widow and forsaken of many, who for the sins of my children am left desolate because they departed from the law of the Most High. That's our people. We departed from the laws of the Lord. Okay. We started to follow after the customs and cultures of the other nations, and that's what led us to be Hellenized and, you know, all the other forms of, of indoctrination by these other nations. But the Lord is calling us back into our sovereignty, our liberty through Yahweh shot. See that? That's the spirit, man. Woo hey, Barak, I thought Yahweh by Shema was shot. You know, the Lord calling us back into our liberty, man. So it's a beautiful thing to be called back into that liberty. Okay. So, yeah, man, I just wanted to do that, that lesson. Uh, matter of fact, I'll just finish, finish reading it through. Verse 12, let no man rejoice over me, a widow and forsaken of many who for the sins of my children am left desolate because they departed from the law of the Most High. They knew not his statutes, nor walked in the ways of his commandments, nor trod in the paths of discipline in his righteousness. Let them that dwell about Zion come and remember ye the captivity of my sons and daughters, which the everlasting have brought upon them. So it shows you that the land of Israel was left desolate as a widow. Okay? Because her children weren't there. To, she wasn't, she didn't know, she, she couldn't nurse her children. She couldn't bring forth the fruit. Okay, of that land. All right. And also, too, the southern kingdom. All right. When the southern kingdom dwelt over here, okay, during 70 AD, which Israel was a Roman province, you had the Roman armies that came in and invaded Jerusalem. Okay. They came and invaded Jerusalem, and then they, a bunch of Jakes did what? They fled south. They went down the same way, okay, that we came into Israel, you know. Through what? Through the Gulf of Suez, a.k.a. the Red Sea. That's how we got into Israel, okay, from under the Egyptians, you know. And then what? Then we came back down, you know, during 70 A.D., came back through here, through this area, okay, fled into the interiors of Africa, okay, just like that there. The only way you can get into Africa, all right, is by either is cutting across these bodies of water. That's the only way. You got to cut across these bodies of water, man. Okay? So they came down into, you know, that's why I could say the earth helped the woman. In uh, Revelation, the 12th chapter. And Jake came down into these different parts of uh, Africa. And eventually they settled over on the majority of the Western Bank. Ghana, Cote d'Ivoire, Libya, Sierra Leone, Senegal, uh, Lagos, which is Nigeria. Predominantly in Nigeria. You got Jake's all over this area right here. Ghana, you had the kingdoms of Mali, Nigeria, okay? You had Jake's all up in here. A lot of, you had a lot of Hamites over there too, okay? So when the scriptures say the earth helped the woman is when Jake fled into the interiors of Africa, all right, during the 70 AD uh, ransacking, okay? So that's how we proved that that landmass belonged to the, 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 the Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans. So Lord willing, that was edifying to the next time I say Shalom.